Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program where we learn how to connect with God through different stories, songs, and activities. And if you are a regular, we want to welcome you back. I am so happy that you decided to join us today. Now today is a special day. In addition to being Sabbath, and we have a special program prepared for you, it's also 4th of July. Whoa, what a celebration. It is a different 4th of July this year because we can't go out to par for parades, we can't go out for uh, fireworks, but it is 4th of July, and I hope that you guys get to celebrate 4th of July at home with mom and dad too, okay? Now, speaking of celebration, today, being 4th of July and being Sabbath, we are going to invite someone to be here and celebrate Kids Connection with us. So, and let's call out his name. You know who I'm talking about. It's been a while since we haven't had a kid here with us. So, kid, kid, come on out. Oh, here's kid. Hello, kid. Good to see you. Wow, I'm so happy that kid is here with us today at Kids Connection. It has been a while since last time we saw you, kid. We miss you so much, kid. We've been taking Kid to visit you guys, to visit some of the kids, and, and we've been driving him around. But Kid actually uh, hasn't been here at Kids Connection, but today is a special day. I'm happy that you're here with us today, Kid. Welcome to Kids Connection. Do you guys miss Kid? Do you miss being here? Me too. Kid, there are a lot of kids out there that really miss being with you and hugging you, Kid. But don't worry. We pray that all this goes away soon and we get to spend some time with Kid and here at Kids Connection. Right, Kid? Excellent, excellent. Today, I'm happy because it's Sabbath, because you guys are here, I'm here, Kid is here, and what about if we start singing our song of the day together? Yes? Let's get our program started and we'll be talking about a couple things right after the song. So get up, let's start moving and sing our song of the day. Me! 
If God is for us, who can be against us, right? That was an amazing song. We had so much fun singing that song right here at Kids Connection. Hopefully you guys got to sing it at home too and have fun. Now, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. Thank you for your love and for your protection. We ask that you be with each boy and girl as we listen to this program today. And may everything that we do here be only to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever found something that was lost and you rebuilt that thing? Kid? Have you? Yes, I have done that too. One time I found a toy that I had lost long, long, long time ago. And I had to clean that toy, fix it, and then I could play it again with that toy. But after that, it was so much fun. Well, in today's missionary story, we're gonna see a story of a, some people in other places in the world where they found something that was abandoned and they are now trying to rebuild what it was abandoned for a long time and our offerings are actually going to help them rebuild something that they found let's watch our missionary story these ruins used to be a beautiful church now this place has been claimed by plants but hope is not gone just like these plants the Seventh-day Adventist Church took root in this country nearly 100 years ago. In 1926, the first Adventist missionaries to Liberia, R. Helbig and E. Flammer, arrived. A year later, these German missionaries established Liberia's first Adventist church. I started going to church here in 1989 by my, uh, my late father, who was once a deacon of the church. He used to carry me to church when I was a little and brought the school here and they encouraged us, the young children from the church, to come here and go to school. There I was in the school and then he talked to me uh, to join the baptismal class in the church. So at that time I used to come, with, come to church by my dad, but I was not too regular. But from his effort, I was able to become beings and become a member of the church. After Elder May was baptized, the first Liberian civil war erupted. Political and military conflict forced many church members to flee. During the war, both the church and the school were burnt down by rebels. We could hear gunshot. Yeah, we could hear gunshot. So those who left behind gave us the information that your church is broken down, is being burnt. A place which was once a blessing and a source of joy was now reduced to ruins. But after the conflict subsided, a faithful group worshipped in the only area that survived the destruction. To this day, they joyfully worship together and are confident that if the place is rebuilt, the congregation can be restored to what it once was. Sadly, this small group's funds are limited. It would take a miracle for them to reconstruct even a portion of the building. If I had money, I would do it on my own. With the congregation that we have here, we are not able to even face one structure here. So my anticipation is for the World Church to come to our aid so that this place can be rebuilt. Your 13th Sabbath offering will help rebuild the birthplace of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Liberia, where a place of worship and a school can be established again. Please pray for God's people in Liberia so that this dream can become a reality. Thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter. Let's remember the missionaries in our prayers as they continue to find places and to build churches to worship God and share the love of God with other people. Thank you so much for your support. Now, today, I'm gonna share a story with you. A story of a boy. There was a boy named Marcus. Marcus was seven years old. And Marcus really, really liked candies. Do you like candies? I like candies. 
Do you like chocolate? Do you like cake? Do you like ice cream? <gasps> ice cream is so good, especially now with a hot day as it is, right? A nice cup of ice cream is awesome. So Marcus liked candies. And one day, mom and dad said, Marcus, we're gonna go somewhere and you're gonna stay here with your older brother. But remember, don't eat too much candy. When mom and dad come back, we are going to tell you how much candy you can have. Mom and dad left. They went to do some, uh, to run some errands. And when they left, Marcus was looking at a big jar, this big jar of candy. And Marcus was thinking, oh no, why can't I eat this candy? They are so good. Maybe I can eat just one. So Marcus disobeyed mom and he opened the candy and he ate it. Oh, it was so good, so yummy. And Marcus finished that candy and he said, oh, but this is so good. Why doesn't mom and dad want me to eat the candy? So I'm going to eat just one more, just one more candy. And, and he grabbed another candy and he opened and he ate another candy. Oh, no, 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 this is wrong. But wait, why is it wrong? Candy is so good. No, I can't, I, I, it can't be wrong to eat candy. It can't be wrong. Why is mom and dad not letting me eat all this candy? I'm gonna eat one more because this is so good. Then he opened another candy and he ate that candy again. And uh, he couldn't control himself. And after that, he opened another candy and he ate that candy again. And one more, and one more, and one more. And Marcus ate almost the entire bowl of candies. Oh, whoa! As soon as he realized that there were only a few candies left on the bottom of that candy bowl, Marcus said, Wow, mom and dad asked me not to eat the candies. And I ate it almost the whole thing. But Marcus kept thinking, why I, why is, why is mom, mom and dad telling me not to eat the candies? If candies is so good, it's so sweet, why are they telling me not to eat it? I can't believe that mom and dad are, don't, don't let me do something that is, is so good for me. Good, candy is good, Marcus thought. All of a sudden, Marcus started feeling a little funny feeling on his stomach. And Marcus didn't know what it was. And Marcus said, oh, maybe if I eat a couple more candies, it'll, it'll help my stomach. But his stomach started making this sound. And Marcus, he didn't know what it was. And ow, 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 it's hurting. Oh no, my stomach is hurting. I, I'm gonna drink some water. And he grabbed some, a big cup of water and he drank that water and all that water didn't make him feel any better. And he said, I'm gonna drink some juice and he got a cup of juice and he drank juice and it didn't help at all. All of a sudden, Marcus started feeling dizzy. And he was dizzy and his stomach was hurting and he couldn't stand up. So Marcus lay down and all of a sudden, he hears something. The door opened and mom and dad came home. Oh no, mom and dad are home and mom and dad walked in and they saw Marcus 
on the couch, laying down with his hands on his stomach and with a face like he's in real pain. And mom and dad knew exactly what had happened. They turned around and they looked, they looked at the bowl of candies and it was almost empty. And they said, Marcus, what did you do? And Marcus said, Mom and Dad, I ate all the candies. Marcus, we have to take you to the hospital now because of all the candy that you ate. And Mom and Dad got Marcus in the car and they drove him to the hospital. While at the hospital and the doctor was looking at Marcus, Marcus, the doctor said, Marcus, why did you eat all those candies? And Marcus said, Doctor, I don't know why I couldn't eat the candies. If they were so good, I couldn't resist them. I didn't know why mom and dad was, they were telling me not to eat it. And the doctor said, you know Marcus, just because we think something is good, it's up to us to obey. Mom and dad are going to tell you what's right and what's best for you. And sometimes it may sound a little harsh and we may think that mom and dad don't like us. But you know what, Marcus? They know what's best for you. And if they told you not to eat the candy, it's because they knew what could have happened to you. And here you are seeing the doctor because of all the candy that you ate. The doctor gave him some medicine and to make his stomach feel a little his stomach to feel a little better, and they went home. When they got home, Marcus said, Mom, Dad, I am so sorry that I ate all those candy. I didn't know that you were looking out for my best. I didn't know what too much candy would do to me. And I thought that you just didn't want me to eat any candy at all. You know, kids, in today's lesson, we are going to learn something about the Bible, a story in the Bible, that God gave some people the freedom for, for them to choose what they wanted. A couple, to be more exact. exact. A man and a woman. And God said something to them, and God, but God also gave them the freedom to choose. And this is something that God gives us. God tells us what's right, what's wrong, and He let us choose. Because remember what we talked about last week? Our lives is full of choices. We have to decide everything. I had to decide to be here today and do the Kids Connection program. It's all about choices and you chose to be here sitting on your couch, looking at your computer or TV or your mom's phone and watching the program today. This was all done because you chose. Now, having the right choice is hard. Sometimes we may look at something and think that something is really good and it can't be wrong. Why something that good can be wrong? Well, the same way that Marcus chose something that he thought it was good, but it turned out to be bad for his stomach because he ate too much, sometimes we do the same thing. We choose something thinking that we're choosing the right thing, but it's actually not. Let's pay attention to our story today and see what happened to this man and this woman as they chose the things by themselves and when God allowed them to make those choices. So now I'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day with us. And kid, come on out here, kid. Let's sing our song of the day together again as we finish our program.
Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving us and for giving us the freedom of choice. Help us to choose right each time and may everything that we do be to, be to glorify your name. Help us to know what's right and what's wrong. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for participating in another Kids Connection program. Uh, Kid just went out to get a friend of ours and because it is 4th of July weekend, we have a little, kid, come on out here. We have a little friend. Here, let me show, let me show the kids. All right, so it is 4th of July, and this is Rosie. Do you guys remember Rosie, how tiny she was? Well, look at her. She's a little bit big now, and uh, we have her dressed up as 4th of July. She's ready to celebrate 4th of July. Today's 4th of July. Um, and I hope that you guys do something fun at home too, celebrating 4th of July. Dress up with the American flag, or take some pictures, Send us those pictures. We'd love to see you guys. We'd love to get in touch. Our email is bbkidsconnection at gmail.com. Okay, kid? Are you going to celebrate 4th of July today, kid? Are you going to dress up? Kid is going to dress up. He's going to put an American flag. He's going to put an American t-shirt and, and maybe a hat. Wait, do we have a hat that big? Whoa, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but let us know what happened. Let us know how you guys celebrate 4th of July, okay? Ask mom and dad to send us an email and send us a note. We would love to hear to read your note here on Kids Connection here in the air, okay? Wonderful. Now, also, I want to give a shout out. Uh, mom got in touch with us this week. And kid, someone turned six yesterday. And mom sent us a note saying that Jacob Jacob turned six years old yesterday. Happy birthday, Jacob. Uh, we also have Kid that is scheduled to come and visit you. So Jacob, get ready. One of these days, Kid is gonna come by and he's gonna say hello. I'm gonna drive Kid. Tomorrow, Kid is actually doing something. Today, this afternoon, he's, going, he's doing a ministry. He's helping other places, so we can't go there. But don't worry, one of these days we're gonna touch with mom and we're gonna drive kid to your place. And you guys, if you want kid to come and visit you, kid, are you happy to visit the kids? Are you happy to visit all the boys and girls? Kid is super happy and I'm so excited to drive kid to your house. So let us know, we'll drive over there, we'll say hello from a distance, we'll take some pictures, we'll have Rosie with us in the car, we'll have Rosie say hello to you too, okay? So come back next week for another Kids Connection program. I love you guys, I miss you guys so much, and we'll see you next Sabbath. Thank you for watching, bye-bye, bye-bye. Welcome to Sabbath School. I am Teacher Kelly, and we're gonna play a game about whether you see a hero or a villain, which is a bad guy.
I'm sure you knew most of them, which were the good guys and which were the bad guys, because we're familiar with them. But maybe you chose one side because somebody in your family might have known. But what if they were wrong? Sometimes we take the lead of somebody else thinking they're doing what is right, but it's not always right. Unfortunately, it's not always easy to tell the right way or the wrong way and we may follow somebody's lead who may not be doing the right things. But our parents help us choose between right and wrong. The Bible helps us know what to choose what is best for us because of God's love. You can make your own superhero mask. Ask your parents to help you search on the internet for a printable one. In our story today, God gave Adam and Eve just one rule to follow. What are rules for? Rules are to keep us safe. Let's think of some. Why do your parents make you wear a helmet when you're riding your bike or riding a scooter? That's right, to protect your head in case you fall off. Does it mean you're always gonna fall off? No, but it means you're always protected in case you do, because you never know when that will be. Just like, why do we wear a seatbelt in the car? That's right, to keep us safe from flying out of the windshield in case somebody bumps into us. Seatbelts keep us safe. Let's see, what else keeps us safe? How about, why do we have to stop at a stop sign? Some people don't, and what could happen? Yes, cars can crash or people can get hit. It, that's why the rule is to stop, to keep us safe. Why do we have to wear a face mask during the coronavirus? Because they think if everybody wears one, we can keep each other safe from accidental spitting of our germs when we're talking or breathing or coughing or sneezing. Rules are to keep us safe. So what was that one rule Adam and Eve needed to obey? Let's go back to our Bibles and check it out. We spent a lot of time studying about Moses and Judges and all of the great stories in the Bible. But today we're going to the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, where it tells us how the world was created. Who created the universe and everything in it? God, God made the universe and everything in it. Yes, God did. And how did he feel about all the things he created? He felt good. He said it was good. That's right. God put Adam, the perfect man, in the perfect place, full of perfect animals, and gave him a perfect partner, Eve. And everything was very good. God told Adam and Eve that they could not eat the fruit from just one tree in the garden. Does anyone remember the name of that one tree that they could not eat from? Okay, Aaliyah, you tell us. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. What was the name of the tree that Adam and Eve could eat from? The tree of life. That's right, the tree of life. Do you know this tree had many types of different fruit on it? My favorite fruit is summer fruit, but I have to wait an entire year for it to come back around again. What is your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit is a peach, but I love all of the summer fruits. I have some summer fruit here. I have some cherries. We have to wait until the summer until we can eat cherries. And I have a nectarine. It's much like a peach, but it's got smooth skin. But like I said, my favorite is a peach. Its skin is fuzzy. We also have apricots and grapefruit and watermelon. There's so much fruit for us to enjoy in the summer. But this tree of life had fruit every month. It would be different. Wouldn't that be incredible? Revelation tells us that. When we get to heaven, we get to eat from the tree of life. 
Often people show pictures of the tree of knowledge of good and evil as an apple tree. We don't know what type of fruit was on that tree, but since we've been talking about fruit, I wanna show you guys how to make a very fun and healthy snack, apple chips. You can enjoy them this summer. Okay, so I have this contraption here that's clamped to the table and actually will core, slice, and peel the apple all at the same time. So I'm going to put the apple on the core and Cody's going to crank it. The other way. Let's see what happens. this so yeah you can eat it and what we're just gonna do is cut little spirals in half and then we're gonna lay these out onto a cookie sheet I'll say if you don't have one of these cool gadgets you can just go ahead and slice them thinly with a knife and probably want to use at least four apples bake for 10 hours at 200 degrees. Cam boards are so yummy. Thank you. Anymore, anymore? So in this Garden of Eden, it gave Adam and Eve the opportunity to make choices but they had to follow that one rule. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, meaning the knowledge, the understanding that there's a good side and there's a bad side, they didn't know the bad side. They only knew everything that was good. They were told not to eat from that tree. And it was in the middle of the garden, but the tree of life was also in the middle of the garden too. And that's the one they were supposed to eat from. And there's plenty of other things to eat and enjoy in that garden too. So what happened? Did Adam and Eve obey the Lord? No. That's right, Tyel. They didn't. A serpent came out and tripped them. Do you know what happens when we break a rule? There are consequences. What if you didn't wear a seatbelt? and you got into a car accident? Or what if you didn't wear a helmet and you got hit by a car when you're on your bike? God made the rule to protect them. He had to give them a choice. Without choices, there is no love. We're not forced to love Jesus, we're given that choice. If God had made Adam and Eve to love him only without any choice, they would be puppets. Let's listen to this story. Hi, I'm Teacher Patty. I'm going to read a little story for you all today. Matt was so excited to visit the Science Center on his school field trip. There was a dinosaur exhibit, a planetarium, and a giant aquarium. But Matt was most excited to see the new robotics exhibit. Whoa, look at this one, Matt said to his friend Chrissy as he pointed to a robotic snake that slithered along the floor. That's so cool. I wonder if the snake can stick out a robotic tongue, Chrissy laughed. Huh, what do you think this one does, Matt asked as he walked to the next robot. This one looks like a person. Hello there, my name is Boris. I am a robot. What is your name? asked the robot. Whoa! You can talk? My name is Matt and this is my friend Chrissy, said a surprised Matt. Hello, Matt. Hello, Chrissy, said the robot. This is so cool, Chrissy said in awe. What else can you do besides talk? I can look up information on the internet, said the robot. It is currently 1.53 p.m. It is 54 degrees outside. What's two plus two? asked Matt. Two plus two equals four, said the robot. You're so smart, said Chrissy. Can you do anything else? 
I can be your friend, said the robot. Matt laughed. Why are you laughing, Matt? asked Chrissy, confused. He wants to be our friend. Because he's not really real. I mean, he can talk and move and stuff, which is really cool, but he can't really be our friend because he can't care about us. He can only act like a friend, Matt said. You are right, Matt, said the robot. I am only programmed to do things a friend would do. Hmm, I guess it's not really the same if someone or something is just made to be your friend, Chrissy said. Yeah, it means a lot more when someone chooses to be your friend, because they know you aren't perfect and choose to love you anyway, Matt said. Well, come on, friend. Let's go see the next display, Chrissy said with a smile as she and Matt walked away. Thank you, Teacher Patty. Matt and Chrissy both recognized that love only is meaningful when you can choose it. The robot couldn't choose to love them. The choice they made to eat from the tree made them disappointed in themselves. They realized they did something terribly wrong. It made them want to hide from God. It changed their relationship with God and with each other forever. But thankfully, God set up a plan to keep loving us despite the choices we make sometimes. For the craft today, we're gonna make a target that you can throw things at to see if you can hit the mark. So usually on a target, the mark would be the center. I happen to have these supplies at home already. If you don't, you're gonna make yours out of paper and I'll show you how to do that. But if you have supplies at home that I used, I used a foam board to attach it. I had felt that I cut out and I also had puff paint to put my mark on the board. And then I also had a ping pong ball and Velcro strips that were adhesive. I cut them thinner and wrapped it around the ball so that when you throw the, tar the ball at the target, it will stick. And of course, you want to try to hit the mark. Now to beat the boredom in July, you could create one of these. But if you wanna do it right now and you don't have these supplies at home, you'll just use paper and you're just gonna take a sheet of paper and something circular you can find in your house, like a plate or a bowl or a lid of something, and you're going to put it on your paper and then trace with a pencil around, and then you're gonna find a slightly smaller circle and put it inside of that one, and then you can make your mark in the center. So it'll look something like this, and then you can just put a mark in the center that you wanna hit. Like, you can just draw another little circle, and then you can start to throw things at it, and let's say you wanna make these worth some points. So the middle center could be worth the most points because it's the hardest to get. So we'll just say that's 100 points, and then the next ring could be 50 points, and then the other ring could be 25 points. So you could have a competition with somebody and see who can make the most points, like the first to 500 wins. So if you don't, so this target will be like posted up on a wall or somewhere because my Velcro ball will stick to it if you throw it. But if you don't have this, then what you can do is just put this on the ground and try to throw balls at it. Or you could also tape it to your wall and throw like a bouncy ball at it, but you have to watch carefully to see where it lands because it's not gonna stick. But you can find fun and creative ways to play this at home. Romans 3.23 tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Falling short means if I threw my ball and I missed the mark, let's say I landed here, I fell short of the mark. The mark would be like perfection. We fall short. So we need God's grace. So instead of the X here, we're going to add one that says grace. So with puff paints, I wrote the word grace. You can write it in a pen or pencil on your paperboard. And because we're always missing the mark. We're always falling short of the glory of God. We can't live without grace. Grace 
is what we get from Jesus' death on the cross for us. Because we are sinners, there is no way we can pay the price for all of our sins. Grace covers us. Grace protects us every time we fall short. That's why God gave us our own free will, the ability to choose and say yes to God. What have you done that might have gotten you into trouble? Have you said something mean to your brother or sister or called your mom a bad name? It makes us feel guilty. Sometimes we want to run and hide. It's hard to say sorry sometimes. I was so busy one day, I skipped lunch. So instead, I ate an entire bag of these chips because I didn't want to stop to make something healthy and nutritious for my body. So I ate this entire bag without thinking about the consequences. Do you want to know what happened to me? That evening I had a good dinner, but I had a gigantic headache because I didn't nourish my cells in my body that needed a wholesome meal. I didn't have enough protein, I had way too much sodium, and I felt sick. And it continued into the next morning because I did not take care of myself. I didn't stop to think about these consequences though while I was eating it in a pinch. I didn't realize I had sinned, but I knew it wasn't good for me, but I didn't even stop to think of the consequences. And we're human and we do that all of the time. So because of that, we need God's grace through Jesus Christ. Adam and Eve knew what they did would hurt God besides just themselves. God had to go looking for Adam and Eve because they were hidden. They were so shameful. We all missed the mark. Thankfully, Jesus came to help us. He offers to forgive us and help us when we are tempted to do something that might hurt ourselves and others. Brandon's gonna tell us what Matthew 6, 13 says. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. Matthew 6, 13. We should follow Jesus's example and pray for God's help. Jesus said we can pray to say no to things that might hurt us. One time, Dylan, my son Dylan, called Cody a bad name. And, you know, it happens before where they go back and forth and they get in trouble for being rude to each other. But this time, Cody kissed Dylan on the head. And Cody put out the fire and chose love instead. And it solved the problem. We choose to do good because we want to be like God. We have to show others in this world that God's love is what sets us free. James 4, 17 tells us, if we know the right thing to do and we don't do it, we are sinning. Let's read it together. And when a person knows the right thing to do, but does not do it, then he is sinning. James 4, 17. Remember that sin is anything that goes against God or what we know is right. The choices we make have a big impact in our life. Look at what happened to Adam and Eve. Sometimes we may want to do some things that are not the best for us without thinking of the consequences, much like me with my chips for lunch. Let's read 1 John 1, 9. See what it has to say. If we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive us. All of our sins will be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Because of Jesus, we have grace. God is faithful to forgive us from all of our sins. How awesome that our creator gives us the freedom to choose. Let's choose him. Max and Vita are going to pray with us today. I'll start. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your Sabbath day you have given to us so we can celebrate. And thank you for all that you have done for us, for forgiving us when we continue to fall short of your glory. 
Thank you for having a plan to send us home to heaven with you and that we may eat of the tree of life again. And please be with us. We can make good choices, choices to please you and choices to show others of your love. Make us have a good day and make us have a good night rest and make us have no bad dreams. Thank you for protecting us and thank you for providing us and, and help my um and help us help my dad my mom my um brothers my um me have no bad dreams thank you so much for these beautiful children and their families please continue to keep us safe and help us to make the right choices in your precious name we pray amen bye guys Yay!